What is cracking people? In the previous video we started our 2D platformer-ish game and we created our level and we created the movement of the player. But we didn't animate the player and we didn't make him jump so uh, let's take a look at how we can do that. So I have the player over here and in order to animate him we need to get this component or this node, you see, animation because this is his animation. And in order to do that we need to go back here and I already have a reference to it as you can see but we need to get the real reference inside of the ready function. So I need to say here animation is equal to get node and not name, get node. The node type is animated sprite. You see here, this is the type of the node animated sprite. And how do I know that? If I go over here and hover over it, you see the type is animated sprite. And now we need to provide the name of the node that we want to get. So what is the name of it? It's animation like this. And let me just command B here to remove these so yeah, we also need to use the jump force so that this right here will be removed. Can I remove it like this? No, I don't know. Anyways, it's not important. So we have here the animated sprite and we get it here from the animation. What I'm gonna do is go below the player movement and here I'm going to create a void function that's gonna animate our player. And I'm going to call this one animate movement, which takes two Boolean parameters. One is gonna be bool moving and another one is gonna be bool move right. And why do we need this? Well, we will see in a second. First of all, if we are moving, so here, if moving, not move right, but if moving, moving, come on, finally. So if we are moving, then simply we're going to call animation.play and we're going to play the walk animation. How do I know it's walk? Well, if I go back here, you see I have two animations walk and idle as you can see over here i have selected walk now i have idle if you want them to play so if you want to play one of them if i want to play the walk simply click or call play and call walk there you go simple as that and here else if we are not moving so else if we are not moving simply we're going to go and call here idle which is going to play the idle animation now we are going to call this inside over here. So let me just take this. So here when we are moving, you see we're moving to the right, which means here I'm going to say true for moving and true moving to the right side. As you can see, move right. We have here move right. And here we're moving to the left. So here I'm going to say true for moving and false because we're moving to the left side. Move right here is false. And here when we stop moving, we can simply say false here. And here we can say either true or false. It doesn't matter because we will see in a second, but I want to demonstrate you one thing. So if we go back over here and I hit command B to play our game, which is going to run it. Notice now when I start moving, you see he is animated. Everything is cool. This is totally normal, right? Well, wrong, because now if I go to the left side, you see he's moving backwards, except if you want to have this kind of functionality where your player is moving backwards for I don't know what reason, because I don't know, you're weird. So yeah, anyways, you see, if I click or hold command D or command D, just D or A or left arrow or right arrow, what's wrong with me? You see, he's moving, he's being animated, but when he goes to the left side, he's not facing that side. That's why I added this right here, move right. Why? Well, because if we are moving over here, so when we are moving, I'm going to also check if move right. So if we're moving to the right side, else if we're moving to the left side, because if we are moving to the right, I need to go back here and demonstrate that for you. Notice where the player is facing. He is currently looking to the right side. If I select the animation, which is our animated sprite and go over here in the inspector and for the properties, you see here, I have something called flip H and flip V. Hey, H is for horizontal, V is for vertical. If I check this on for H, you see he's gonna flip it and he's gonna start looking to the left side. As you can see, flip it again, he's looking to the right side. Flip it again, left side. You see what I mean? So when we flip it and by default, as you can see how this sprite is created, he is facing the right side. So when we don't flip it, he's gonna face the right side, which means over here, we're going to call animation flip H is false because when we don't flip it, he's looking the right side. And here else, if we're moving to the left side, we need to flip it because as again, I said that by default, this sprite is looking to the right side, how it's created. So if we try to move to the left, we need to flip it. If I go back now and command B to run our game, 
you will see now when I go to the right, he is facing the right side, which is okay. We're not flipping him, but if we go to the left, pay attention. You see, bam, he is flipping. Flippa, flippa. You see, he is flipping, you know, flipping. Anyways, <laughs> I don't want to annoy you even though you're annoyed, but you're here to learn. So when we go to the right side now, everything is cool. We are not flipping him. He's facing the right side. If we go to the left, he is also being or he's flipped and looking to the left side, which brings me back here in our else. You see here in the else statement when we stop moving. So here this these two are for movement. So if we move to the right side, true is for movement and true. We're moving to the right. If we're moving to the left, so movement is true. So we're moving and here falls because we're moving, we are moving to the left side. But in the else statement, we're not moving. So here we can say false or we need to say false because we're not moving. And here we can say either true or false. And notice if I go back here and not over here, but command B over here, you will notice that nothing will happen. I can move. You see, he is moving and everything is fine. If I stop the movement, he is facing the side where I have stopped moving. So if I'm holding a key and I release it, he's facing the left and this is where he is going to face when we, when I release the button, because if you go over here in our animation or enemy movement, only if we are moving, we are going to flip him else. If we are not moving, we're not going to flip him. And that is basically what we are doing here. And this is how we can, this is how we can determine when to move, when not to move and when to flip the character. So moving forward, what is the next step to do? Now we need to jump. And in order to jump, we have a built-in function from our kinematic body 2D. So this bad boy over here. So if I go here right above our move and slide, and move and slide is also a function that we simply provide. So we call it, it's built in into kinematic body, which will move into the direction where we provide it. And we provided movement here. And we know we are getting the movement over here. So if we press the right arrow key or the D key, we're going to say movement X is equal to move speed. If we press the A key or the left arrow, move speed is negative. So we're moving to the left or to the right. If we don't press movement X is zero. But here I'm going to test if is on floor. So this is a built in function. It will tell us if we are on the floor. And if that is the case, if our input dot is key just so is action just pressed and that action is going to be jump and if you remember in the first video we set the jump to be equal to space so when we press space on our keyboard we are going to jump but notice here so what is the next thing to do we need to say movement dot y is going to be equal to jump force simple as that you see movement y is equal to jump force if i go back and in our game command B, let's test it out and see if it actually works. So command B, if I jump, nothing is working. What is wrong with teacher? You're crazy. What are you doing? Calm down. Calm down, man. I'm pressing space, but it is not working. So what is the issue? You see here, if I go back, you, we have the jump and just to be 100% sure that I added the jump. So input map, here it is. So we have the jump is space. So yeah, everything was clear, but it's not working. Why? Well, because you see here, move and slide, we need to tell it if I hover over, you see, I don't know if you can see the explanation. You see here we have move and slide, which takes a vector to a linear velocity, but it also takes a vector to floor normal. What does that mean? We need to tell it where is the floor. We know that going down, so in Godot engine, when we go down and if I take here my highlight tool, so highlight going down and come on highlight. So this is the coordinate system. This is the Y axis. This is the X axis. Plus is over here. Negative is over here for the X, but for the Y negative is up. Plus is down. So when we go down, we are going positive. We're going plus, which means we need to tell in which direction is the floor. And in order to tell that we have this right here, up direction, you see up direction, because I'm saying up because this is a shortcut for writing this new vector two zero for the X one for the Y. So this is that shortcut. So if I say here vector two up, it's the same thing as if I wrote vector two zero for X one for the Y. So yeah, I need to get that out of the way. But here we need to provide that. So we need to say here up the RI, so up the RI, which essentially will have a positive value, which means we're going down. So now it will inform our kinematic body that down is the floor. 
So if I go back now here and command B to run our game, let's see if the floor will be detected. Space, we space, we space, we you get the point. You see now it knows where is the floor or the ground because we told it it's down, it's below us. But we also have one more issue. I'm gonna go here and I'm going to say gd.print, which is good though for print. And here I'm going to say the value is like this. I'm going to say plus movement. Now this movement over here is our movement. You see, it's our movement over here that we are adding to it. You see over this, everything here that we're adding. But I want to show you one thing. If I go back here in our engine and command B, notice what's gonna happen in the output. We are going to print, so let's go here in the output. You see the value keeps increasing even though we're just standing on the ground. You see, I'm just standing. If I jump, you see the value is at the value that we provide, but then it starts increasing and we don't want that. So I'm just gonna close this, you see? We don't want that. It's increasing even though it's not gonna hurt our game but maybe you will need it for something else where it will hurt your game if you have it like this. So in order to fix it, we need to simply say here movement is equal to move and slide and here provide, well, simply movement. So everything else is gonna be the same except here we're going to say movement is equal to move and slide and voila, that is that. So if I go back now here and command B, so command B to run the game, notice now what's gonna happen here in the output. We're standing, you see we're standing, but the output is, if I clear it, you see the output is zero. If I jump, we go up to negative 90 or 80, 800, how much we set, and then it's gonna go back down again. You see, if I go over here, let me just find where we jumped. Where did we jump? Here it is. So we jumped, so the value was negative 900. Then it fell down because we're subtracting gravity. As you can see over here, we're actually adding gravity. You see plus equals gravity, then we move down. But then when we land on the floor, you see the movement value starts to get zero, 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 zero. And we don't want that, even though, as I already said, this will not hurt our game, the previous one where we added the values, but I just wanted to show you that in case you create some game on your own, use this or you use this code that I provided over here, and then you have issues. So this is how you will know what the issue is. And basically this is how we can animate and move our player. And starting from the next video, we will probably add the camera. So program the movement of the camera, then we will add enemies and yeah, wrapping up our game. If you want to learn more about Godot, I have that in my Game Development Academy. Hopefully by now I have, I have also Blender and, and Game Maker and I'm working on Unreal if I don't have it already click on the link below and I probably have a month trial. So I have one month trial for $2. So you can try the Academy out for $2. Click on the link below and you can learn for one month for $2. Like, yeah. So yeah, I will see you guys in another video.